Tommy here from Lauren Systems, and let's talk about Synology, Surveillance Station, and Amcrest cameras. Now, there's a lot of cameras you can use with Synology Surveillance Station, which of course means lots of people asking the questions of which ones should you use. I have not had the time to review every camera model. There are a lot of reviews out there, and there's a lot of good cameras, and there's a massive compatibility list, as I stated, with the Synology Surveillance Station. Now, the Amcrest ones in particular we're going to talk about today, though, are the Amcrest AI. Two different models that I have, and I have actually several different models around my house, but these ones in particular are really good at two things, being able to determine vehicles versus people or face detection. The ability to do that is very helpful for the use case I have for them. Now, cameras can do either standard motion detection, which pretty much are all cameras are supported on that, but having a system that actually can recognize objects, such as a person, gives you more fine grain control over the alerting. I wanna to show today how these cameras work and how to set up that alerting in Synology. That way, every time a squirrel goes by and you know sets off a motion event on the camera, it doesn't trigger the event of showing that a person was there. And this is obviously really helpful, so you can only have the good notices and then still have the motion because, well, if something does happen or the squirrel does something and you're curious about it, you want to have those motion events. And we'll show up both on this demo here today. Before we dive into this video, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, such as consulting for Synology, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below for get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. Now, specifically the models we'll be talking about, and everything's gonna be linked down below in the description as well, is the Amcrest Night Color 4 megapixel Ultra HD PoE turret camera with 66 full night color vision, and I'll let you read the rest. The model number on this is IP4M1048-EWAI. The AI is what allows it to do the object detection, and it makes these ones a little bit more expensive. The MSRP on this is like 189, and no, this model's not 4K, it's only four megapixel. This is the one I use for my porch, and the reason why is it has a built-in microphone and it offers full night color vision. This feature is really handy when you wanna know who's standing on your porch, be able to see with good color, has these two little lights on it right here, and these are not your standard infrared lights, these are normal, like a warm light. Actually, it also serves as a porch light, as it turns out, they're bright enough for that. I only have them roughly set at 50%, but it allows me to see my porch at night. Uh, so if I don't have my porch light on, this kind of doubles as a porch light. This also is what helps the true color really see the color combined with the microphone. And the microphone on here works quite well the way I have it on my porch. What this allows me to do is if someone came up and delivered a package, it'll alert me that it's seen a person in the detection zone that we'll be setting up on this. It also allows you to go in and hear the conversation that might've been had from a delivery driver. If you know, someone's back and forth at the door, uh, whoever may be knocking at the door. Having that conversation, that makes it actually really a nice feature. Future Tom here editing the video, realizing you probably want to know what the microphone sounds like. So this is what the microphone sounds like. And yes, that other noise was my phone because it alerted me that there's someone with their face in the camera. The next one we're going to talk about is the Amcrest Ultra HD 4K AI Outdoor Security Camera. This one is a 4K security camera, and it does have a built-in microphone, but it's a little bit less useful once things get away. But if someone's standing in front of my garage, you can definitely hear them talking. As long as the wind isn't blowing, as long as there's not a lot of other noises going on, it's hard because of the distances this can see. But the reason I wanted it 4K is so it can look all the way down my driveway, get a very clear picture of everything on there. And this one is only about 139 and has the ability to determine whether or not there's a person or a vehicle coming in the driveway and set alerts for each of those. Now, let's get into the Synology. Now, this is Synology Surveillance Station version 9. I will do a full review of 9 once it comes out, but the settings are the same in 8 or 9. I've been using this as testing, and it works really well so far as uh, with the Surveillance Station 9. Not really had any issues with it. We're going to go ahead and edit this camera to show you each of the settings that I put in here. I'm making some assumptions that you've already set up the camera, you've already unboxed it, you've already configured it and has an IP address, and you've logged into it, and hopefully you've changed the default password on there. Once you've got all that done, you're going to go over here to recording and we're going to go to schedule and you're going to choose customize one or customize two. You can mix and match these, but you need to use customize over motion detection because with customize, 
and I choose all detections, this is where you can pull from those advanced events, such as these specific ones is the only ones I'm using, but hey, I turned them all on. It's only gonna send the data over for the ones that are in use. So I go ahead and leave it on all detections and I want it doing all the detections all the time. Now it's still gonna do motion recording and we'll cover that in a moment, but it's pretty simple just to grab it and say, all right, all detections and select all right here. Then we go over to the event detection, the detection source for motion is going to be by camera. And then we go over here to advanced event IVS. This is where all the boxes that are available to checked, I recommend checking them. Enable on surveillance station. You don't have to worry about triggering a motion event on there because as long as there's an event, you don't need an additional motion event on there. So if it does the face detect tripwire intrusion or specifically the ones we're going to set up as the human and vehicle, those are checked. You're good to go. Go ahead and cancel out of that. The IP address is 192.168.60.26. So we're going to log into that camera now. So here's my driveway cam. We're going to go to setup. We're going to go over here to video detection. This is where you can set up your detection area for your motion detections. And this is the street. I don't want cars showing up on here. So I block out these. This is a really simple, you can click these and set the different motion options on there, which ones are, you know, going to be noticed. You can set sensitivity, uh, sensitivity areas, and you can actually build ranges of each one if you want to have different zones on here. That one actually worked fine for me on that. Then you go to the smart plan. This is where it can get confusing with the smart plan. We have face detection or IVS. Now, neither one is selected and you can't select both at the same time. And selecting each of these, if you do face detection, you can't do IVS. And if you do IVS, you can't do face detection. And this is where the face detection is. And this is where the IVS is. These allow you to set different zones on there, but I'm not going to use either one of those. We're going to use instead the smart motion detection. And I've found the sensitivity being at the middle works fine. We have it set to object human or motor vehicle. I want to know if someone's in my driveway. I want to know if a car pulls into my driveway and send an alert. And that's all you have to do inside of here. Now, different model cameras may have different exclusions. Like I said, this one in particular had the exclusion on the smart plan that if you turn these on, the smart motion detection won't work. Some may have models have conflicts, some may not. So it is going to vary on model. And we're going to show that again in the other camera, which also has a little bit different settings for this. Now let's go back over to the technology and we're going to look at the recordings and we're going to go ahead and select the cameras. And then we're going to only select the driveway and I'll show you the difference in the alerts it has. So right here is our motion advanced event, which means it's seen a person in there for each one of these ones that say advanced event versus right here. It's just a motion detection. Now, the thing that's kind of annoying about how Synology does this, the motion detection, and you can filter for these and trigger on them. So here's where it detected motion was maybe something from this car triggered it, even though it's outside the zone. Occasionally you get some of the motion events where lights shine on something and cause the vehicle to reflect enough that it thinks that there's motion in the camera. So that does happen. I'm thinking actually maybe it was the sign over here that we have in our front yard that reflected it. So you see all these different emotion events. But now if we filter further, we go here, event type, filter for the advanced event, search. Now we can narrow down to events where it actually thought there was a person or a car. And here's like the post office. They were delivering a package. So it sees a person coming up the driveway, not motion. It says specifically that. Or right here, I think this is when my wife came home last night. So we look at this one. And it, the system, you can define how far ahead you want. Even though it detected the motion event over in here, it always records a few seconds ahead so you can get the things leading up to the event. Now, as far as quality on these cameras, it's actually quite good. You'll see here in the car, and this is at night. You can see clearly what's even in the back of the truck. The quality overall, been really happy. I think she realized there was probably a package we didn't get off the front porch. So my wife looked to see if it was on there. But easy enough to see these and find these events. Now, the triggering of these events. This is where you go to, and we're going to go here to notifications and go to the rules. Now, with the rules, one of the things that's really important is you don't want everything to be annoying you, especially all those motion events. So we're going to go over here and specifically select the camera motion events to narrow this down. Connection lost. Yeah, notify me of that. Notify me of that. But specifically, if there's a advanced event detected, we want this to send me an email and we want this to go ahead and send a push notification to the application. And this is the part that's really interesting to me. This is just a screenshot from my email and 
you can see LTS home surveillance vehicle detected. Now, the system did not tell you that in the event log within the web interface of Synology, but when it sends an email, it will tell you that there was an SMD vehicle or SMD person or human in your driveway. And so I like the fact that they have that knowledge and can email it to you and show up in the notifications on the app. But for whatever reason, Synology has omitted that information, or at least I'm unable to find menus for it or read through their documentation to find a way to reveal it inside of the application itself. But the more important thing, of course, is that I have an alert on my phone that there's a vehicle in my driveway because that's more than a squirrel running around and I want to go see who's in my driveway and it causes me to look at the camera. Or in the case of having it as attached email, it grabs a screenshot and throws it in there. Now, one thing of particular note, when you maybe have some friends over and there's a lot of people wandering around the driveway, you may want to put this in home mode. What home mode allows this to do is go in and we're going to set up the home mode real quick. You go to the settings and you want to enable the settings notifications in home mode. And what this is, is the override in home mode where we go through change the notifications and we just have them all turned off. Because if you were to have a handful of people over and it's going to notify you every time it sees a human in the driveway, you'll get a lot of notices of humans in the driveway that you know are already there. So it does have the ability to quickly do this from the app or in here for the home mode to stop that from annoying you. Now let's real quick go over the other camera. There's a little bit of different setup on that one. Now the setup in Synology is the same, but the camera itself has a couple different settings. Now this is the one for my porch. Let me go over to the setup. Go to the events, look at the smart plan. For this one, I'm using the IVS. Now, when you've selected something like IVS, these are grayed out. You can't click them until you unclick the IVS one. The IVS allows you to set up and design. It does load like this. It kind of pauses each time, but you're able to draw the different in and out direction of a zone. And these zones, and we chose intrusion, we said action appears or crosses the zone, objects, human or motor vehicle. And I'm really hoping there's never a motor vehicle notification, but I still left it checked because I want to know if it ever accidentally identifies a person as a motor vehicle, which so far it has not. But it does detect when there's a human in there. Now the motion events are still the same. Under video detection, it still detects when there's motion, when a squirrel runs across, it comes across and notices. No problems there. I just want the IVS notification. That way I know someone set something on my porch. It'll detect a person coming in there and like delivering a package, for example. And I know, okay, it's not the squirrel. So back over to the settings inside of Synology. Here's the front porch camera. And I will note it says Amcrest generic. This exact model is not in there, but the Amcrest generic works perfectly fine for all the event detection because we go over here to the events advanced IVS, and all those options do still show up for the camera and they're checked in the same way. So it's that simple for setting up and everything else for this camera is related the same way where you set it up for the customized recording and all the other settings essentially are the same for event notification. So you have it set up for these two particular front facing cameras in my house. Now, some of you may have asked about the real link cameras I've talked about in the past. Did I have one real link still at my house? I like those, but I've had more failures with them. So for the volume of cameras we installed, the failures were percentage wise very low, but any failure is too many when you're putting these things up and sometimes it requires a lift. We do a lot of commercial cameras, warehouses and such. So getting back to those cameras to swap them out is not necessarily an easy task. The overall real link, there's not that many that fail, but there's enough that I've switched over to the Amcrest. So I will mention that if you dig around on my channel and find some of the older real link videos I did. Majority of the real links have been working for years now without a problem, but we also have more Amcrest out there, I think, now than real link, and we've had no problems with them. Matter of fact, I don't think we've had any of the Amcrest ones fail, with one exception that Mm, could have been our fault is I had a turret cam, one of those PTZ indoor ones. And uh, we actually banged that thing around a few times before it quit. So I, it, there's a good chance it was our fault that one quit because it kind of got bounced around the office and things like that. Um, but those ones are pretty cool. I might get another one. I think they have a newer version of it, but it is kind of cool because the PTZ ones do integrate with Synology as well. And if I get one of the newer models, I'll do an updated video on my channel. Now, as far as Synology and the surveillance station system, there is nothing special about the Synology is running on. This is not one of their special or high-end NVRs that have the extra detection 
detection in it. All this object recognition is done within the Amcrest camera. Now, this is also Synology Surveillance Station Beta 9. I will, as I said, do a full review, but my review of 8 is still pretty relevant and 9's around the corner, so I've been holding off until 9's fully released, which it should be later this year before I do a full review. Now, as I said, everything I talked about will be linked down below. Uh, if you're interested in buying them, yes, there's some Amazon affiliate links. If not, just you know, you don't want to help me out or help the channel. I get it. And you want to just hunt around for a deal. I left the model numbers in there for you too. So hopefully that makes it easier. And hopefully this uh, helps you out with the camera decision. If you have some other cameras that you maybe like better or, you know, know something I don't about how to get those events to show up in Synology other than when it emails me, let me know in the comments down below or have a more in-depth discussion over on our forums. Thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.